Hello, ladies. How are you? Good morning. Today is Wednesday, and normally it's Mindset Day, but everything got pushed back a little bit this week. So today we're going to chat business, and we're going to talk about sales. Sales 101. I actually love this topic. I love sales, and I know a lot of people do not like sales, so I'm really excited. I'm going to give you specific questions to ask when doing sales and getting on a sales call so that you can increase your conversions and also build more connection with your clients. So I see some people joining me this morning. Good morning. If you can put a comment in the comment box so that I know that the comment box is working, that would be super helpful. And also just let me know if you can hear me and the video is streaming okay on your end. That's great. I'm just gonna type in the chat box. As always, I like to get everything set up before we start. Hey, ladies. Okay, I see a bunch of people, don't be shy. If you can just let me know in the chat box that you can hear me, see me okay. That is great, and then we'll get started. As I wait for some of you to get me a comment, um, I'll quickly tell you my morning routine. I still don't see any comments, so let me know if you have written me a comment. Send me a DM so that I'm not just waiting for you ladies. So I have a bunch of people on, just waiting for you ladies to send me a comment to make sure. Oh, yes, here, can't wait. Oh, thanks, Diana, I'm so glad. Can you hear and see me okay? Just, I wanna make sure the audio and video is working all right. Um, I'm glad the comments are working though. And so while I just wait for a few more people to join before we dive into sales, I'm gonna tell you my morning routine as always. So, <clears throat> If you missed the last training on routines, go back, check it out. It is really important to get you grounded for your day. This morning I did a, I listened to Abraham Hicks. I did a love meditation. And again, the love meditation was like one minute long. This does not have to be long. My entire routine took about 30 minutes. I did essential oils, breathing, smiling. I also practice presence. So I sat out on my balcony and just right now it's raining where I am and I just listened to the rain. I smelt the rain and it was just really beautiful. I also did some stretches and I lit my intention candle. Intention candle. And what else did I do? That's what, it, that's what I did this morning. So that was my routine. Let me know your routines if you want to uh, chat about that also. So everything's perfect, comments our little leg, but that's okay. As long as you can hear and see me, it's all good. Thank you so much, ladies. Welcome, Diana, Ashley, and everyone else who is watching. We are gonna dive into sales today. Honestly, this is a topic I really love and I really enjoy learning more about and getting better at because you can always be better at sales. And I know so many people find it kind of disgusting because we've all been on the other side of a sale that's been super aggressive. I will tell you now, I have literally been in tears from some sales conversations where they're trying to sell me something and really making me feel like shit about myself and I'm feeling really forced into a sale. Sounds extreme, but it actually happened. We've also all been on the other side of a sale where it just feels really like slimy and they don't care about you. So I want to, dispel that myth because I know it's really uncomfortable and really focus on our intention going into a sale. So I'm going to give you, there's two, four, six, seven specific questions I go through in my sales call and I will give you those and I will give you some tips. So number one is intention. Going into a sales call, they do not have to buy your product. The goal and the intention is get to know your customer, get to know your client. And if you go back to our business training before, when we talked about 
surveying and building an offer and building a product, the number one step is to understand your client. So 90% of the sales conversion and process is about understanding your client, what they need, what they want, what are their pain points, and truly understanding is what I have to offer a solution to their pain. If it is, awesome. If it isn't, that's okay to walk away and refer them to someone that can actually solve their problem. But you have to know what their situation is if they have a problem and it and or and I use problem lightly. It doesn't always have to be a really big problem. But if they have a pain point that you can solve, then why not? So that also comes connected to mindset. If they have a problem or a situation that you can solve and you don't have the confidence to tell them, hey, my product can help you, there's a disconnect there. And there is a disconnect in your confidence in your product, your confidence in yourself that you can deliver. And that is going to need to take some extra mindset work that we can talk about later, but we could spend an entire training just on that, but really paying attention to do I truly believe? And if I truly believe in the product that I have to offer them and it can help them, what is my disconnect there? And why am I not sharing that with them as well as the price point? This is a mindset part, very big for a lot of women, especially looking at, am I hesitant to share the price? Am I lowballing my price? Do I have a problem raising and increasing my price and or dealing with objections with the price? And I hope today we'll be able to get into some objection, dealing with objections as well. But if not, we'll do an entire training about that too. So you can see that there's so many different elements to sales, the confidence piece and intention, the mindset, as well as dealing with objections in a tactful way. So let me go into the questions and the bigger picture of sales. So the bigger picture of sales is understanding where are they now? Where do they want to go? And are you the bridge and the solution to get them the results that they're looking for? Okay. Very simple. I'm going to give you now seven questions that I ask in order to help uncover that process for them. And as well, you can follow these questions, but again, connect to the client. You don't have to just follow these questions, but you'll kind of see the, the path that I take when using these questions in a sales call. So the first question is where are you at? Okay, very simple. And that is really to uncover where are they right now? What are, you know, what are, and see, the reason I keep it open is I want to see where they take it. They may tell me everything and, or they may need some more needing and some more prodding and more questions to get out where they currently are. You really want to get an entire picture of where they at. What do they need? What are they looking to accomplish? What you know, what is their current state where they are right now? This naturally lends itself to question number two, which is what is your vision? Where do you want to go? Where do you see yourself? What are you hoping to accomplish? You know, who are you hoping to help and who are you hoping to impact? So with the first two questions right off the bat, we want to paint a very strong and clear picture of where they are right now and where they want to go. What are they having trouble with? What do they need help with? You know, what are they struggling with? What are, what is their current state? And then where do they want to go? Very clear, easy two questions. Now the next questions are also really important to connect you with your client and also create a sense of urgency. And note that when you're asking these questions, the first 20 minutes of your sales process is just you asking questions to the client, them talking, pay attention when you're in sales. If you find yourself cutting the client off or talking over the client, it's really important to create space 
and allow the client to answer. And just remember, they're talking the whole time in the beginning, okay? Third question is diving more into what are your current struggles, challenges, problems, okay? Why? And then you'll you'll see they all kind of naturally flow. This is the beautiful thing about these questions. But what are your current struggles? What? Um, why haven't you done what you want to do? What are you struggling with? What's keeping you up at night? What are your main pain points right now? Okay, number three. Going into question four. What is getting in your way? Why haven't you done this? So we really need to get real. If this is your goal, why haven't you done it? Why haven't you created that vision? Why haven't you solved these problems or these challenges that you've been having? Okay, then we're going to go into question number five. And that is why is this important to you? Right? So why now? Why have you, why have you had these challenges? Why haven't you dealt with them? And why is right now the time for you to deal with these challenges and make your vision a reality? We have to get very clear on how committed are they to making this a reality? Where are they? Here often I might ask them a scale of one to 10 question. So I might say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being you you wish that you started this yesterday and one being i can get to this in the next five to ten years where are you you really want to know how important is this vision and goal to them and how willing are they to do whatever it takes to get there you want to know their commitment so that the product and service that you're offering you know how committed they are to making this happen and if you can lay this out nicely in a conversation for them, they may not even realize how important it is to them and why now is a good time. And you're helping them, you'll see through these questions, you're helping them to gain their values, to get very clear on what they want and knowing if right now is the time for them. Okay, next question is who are you doing this for? Are you doing this for yourself, your family, your, um, you know, your, your clients, your customers, understanding, <clears throat> excuse me, their motivation behind their intention and action is really important because let's say you're working in fitness or health and they're saying, you know, I'm doing this for my children. While that may be a really good motivator for them, it also may not be a good motivator for them. Do you understand that you want to understand where their motivation is so that you can also better assist them through the sales process and helping them with their own blocks and their own mindset hurdles that might come in the way? Okay, the last question before you get into the presenting your offer and dealing with objections is really important. And I love this question. <clears throat> what has not doing this? So what has not pursuing your vision? What has not making your vision a reality? What is it and has it actually cost you? People have to know that not taking action is still costing them in one way or another. It could be costing them financially, mentally, physically spiritually, personally, <laughs> so you can go on. But what is it costing them? Is it costing them their confidence, their happiness, inner peace, um, you know, revenue and, and cash and, and or making an impact and creating a community? Knowing, and this is all, so do you see how we're creating urgency within these questions? Is this really important to them? Why is it important to them and why now? And what if you don't do this? You've been going 10, 15 years, however long, not taking action. So what does that cost you? And why is now the end so that we can actually move forward and make this vision a reality? Okay. And do you see how within the questions, I hope it also increases excitement within your client. It gets them excited. Like, oh my gosh, 
I need to make this happen. And if you are truly a solution, then that's a match make it in heaven, right? That's beautiful. So now we go into presenting your offer. So before you present the offer, the next step is reiterating what you heard to them. Just quickly be like, you know, thanks so much for being so open and honest. Uh, what I've been hearing from you <clears throat> and what is important to you is the following. You want to blah, 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 blah. These are your challenges getting in your way. It's super important for you to do it now because of X, Y, Z and not doing this has cost you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then you wait for them. This is a conversation. And oftentimes in sales, people will start talking when this is their time and then they just take off. Just wait, you repeat, you get, you repeat what you heard and then you wait for them to say if that's true or not. Yeah, that's everything. I think you got it. And then I usually say, did I miss anything? Is there anything else you can think about right now that would be important for me to know? And then they maybe will tell me something or they'll say, nope, think you got it. Great. And then you say, okay, because of this and because of what you've told me, I've actually built, you know, this package that I think you might really like. Do you mind if I tell you about it? Again, I'm asking them a question. Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. You tell them the package. You have not told them price yet. You say, I have built a, you know, a fitness package and I will be working with you for three months and I give you a fitness plan and a nutrition plan and blah, 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 blah. Then you ask them, does that package make sense? Does that sound like that's everything that you're looking for? And that will actually help you in your current situation. You want to really make sure when you're presenting your offer that they understand the entire package. It meets their needs and it is what they're looking for. And normally they say, yeah, that sounds like everything I want. <laughs> if you've done the sales process properly, okay? Then you say, okay, great. The entire package, and then you quickly say it again with nine coaching calls, a nutrition plan, a boot camp, a fitness and blah, blah, blah videos. That entire thing is, you know, $3,000. If you pay in full and or you know, X, Y, Z, if you pay monthly, you usually, you don't even have to give them the monthly at that point. You can just say the full price or you can give them your, their two pricing options. Usually if they pay in full, they get some sort of discount and perk and, or if you break it up monthly or in smaller payments. And then after you tell the price, you wait. <laughs> so often we try to fill in the air and we just wait. We wait for them to respond. We wait for them to respond to the price. Here's where you'll, where you'll notice your own money blocks that may be coming up when you're thinking, oh my God, what are they thinking? Is this too much? Is this worth it? Are they going to see the value? Pay attention to what's coming up for you there. It's a mindset thing. Put it aside. Wait for them to give you a response. Now is when the objections may or may not start and where you need to practice dealing with objections. Some of the most common objections are time and money and or, you know, I need to talk to somebody, okay? One really important thing, and we could do an entire training in, on objections, so I'm just gonna keep it really light in this objections piece. For, you wanna really ask them, what is your decision-making process? How do you make decisions? What's important to you? Is there any other information I can give you to make this decision-making process easier for you? And if they say, oh no, I'm just like walking, I just need to think about it. I'm a thinker, I just need to think. Be like, okay, totally get it. I am too, not a problem. Is there anything that you're gonna be thinking about when you go away that I can answer right now? Because if let's try to think out loud so that I can make sure to get you everything. You know, what are some things that may come up for you or reasons that you may say no? They'll be like, you know, price, time, whatever. Then you can go over them. But do you notice you kind of have to ha ask these tough questions that may make you feel uncomfortable? Like, what are you going to think about? What's going to make you say no? What are your deciding factors? Okay. And then you wait for the answer. One 
really great tip that I offer is I'm a thinker too. I would like, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours to think about something. So in honoring people and their need to think, because that is totally fine, you want to give them an incentive. So you can say, not a problem. Let me know. If you let me know within, I'll hold your spot for you. And if you let me know within the next 24 or 48 hours, I can throw in an extra session. I can throw in a month free. I can throw in this online program, or I can throw in this perk because you want them to be able to take advantage of the perk and you want them to make them, you want to make them feel like they're actually getting a deal, right? And give some sort of urgency and incentive for them to purchase. Okay. Is this making sense, ladies? I want to make sure you're still with me. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And then we go into the, I'm just going to do time and money because people's objections, what I really want you to think about is when they give you objections, did I paint a good enough picture to show them value in the package? Do they believe in themselves that they can do this? And do they believe in me that I'm the person that can deliver the package for them. So there's those three elements. So that when you're learning and growing and improving your sales process, you can think, okay, did I show them value? Do they believe in themselves? And did we kind of have that conversation when we talked about challenges and why now? And do they believe in me? Right. And maybe in some of the questions, they may ask you your credentials, you know, why you and you may be able to build that relationship with them, because oftentimes price and time are not about price and time. So you want to dive a little bit deeper because you want to know, OK, did I dive deep enough to cost? Because if we dove deep into cost and they said it's costing me my mental health, money, fitness, but then they're saying that it's too expensive that doesn't make sense. So I'm going to give you an analogy that I heard, which is really awesome. If you, if I were to give you a check for a thousand dollars and I said, here's a check for a thousand dollars, just give me a hundred. You'd be like, is this a joke? Of course I would give you a hundred dollars for a thousand dollars. Well, let's think about your product in the same way, your product or service. If you're selling your product or service and the value that they're going to get from your product or service is a thousand dollars and we're doing this small to give, to make the parallel really easy to follow. But if you're going to guarantee them that they're, it's worth a thousand dollars to have inner peace and they're going to maybe make a thousand dollars worth of sales, whatever it is, and you're only charging a hundred, it's a no brainer for them to pay $100 knowing that they're gonna get $1,000 worth of value. Okay, I hope that example resonates with you and lands with you as well as it did for me when looking at pricing and really nailing home, did I give value? Did I show the value? And you can see how that's so linked to price and looking at if they're saying price, you may not have you know, honed in on the value strong enough, as well as time. Time is really linked to how important is it to them? How much pain have they been feeling and how excited are they for a change and a difference? Because then it doesn't matter. Right. I hope this is making sense. We have some comments. Paige says, yes, love that. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to finish up this sales training today. Again, we can dive deeper into so many of these things. I really just love giving you an overview of sales to help you along this sales process. A couple other asterisks that I want to add to the sales process is number one, are you, um, are you surveying and or gaining information about your client before you step into the sales process. So I personally have a survey sheet and a, what do I call it? Um, yeah, like an intake form for clients who are interested in working with me. 
In that intake form, I have specific questions to know if they're a good fit and to know if we should go on to the next sales process. So just make sure you have some sort of intake, information intake process before you get into the more nitty gritty sales process that we talked about today to make sure it's a good fit, to know they have a budget, to know why they wanna work with you and what they want to accomplish. Because if, let's say you're in construction and they say to you, you know, whatever that intake process is, they're looking for someone to fix the tub and you don't do that. <laughs> it saves you a lot of time and effort in the sales process because you know it's not a good fit. We go back to our initial principle. Sales is just about where are they? What are they looking for? And am I the fit to get them there? Okay. Is this helpful to you ladies as we finish up? Do you have any questions? I see many of you are still with me. So I just want to circle back and quickly check the comment section if you ladies have any questions. Question three and four sounds kind of similar. Can you differentiate three and four? What are your struggles and what is getting in your way? They can be similar depending on how they answer. So it would be really helpful to do like a live, um, a live like demo. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna demo with myself. Oh, ignore my cat, she's, she's excited in the background. And so what are your struggles? So let's say fitness, okay? What are your struggles right now? Well, my struggles are I'm trying to lose 10 pounds and cannot lose 10 pounds. It is, you know, I'm having a really tough time on knowing what food to make and, and knowing what's right for my body. Okay, great. What is getting in your way? Why aren't you going to the gym? Why aren't you eating better? Why? It's just getting it one step deeper. Is this making sense? So why aren't you food prepping? Like really what's getting in your way of making one step in the right direction? I don't care about the 10 pounds. What's stopping you from going to the gym today or working out for 20 minutes? So you got to get really deep in these questions. Just the, oh, what are your challenges? Oh, trying to lose 10 pounds. That's not good enough. We need to get emotion. We need to get connection. We need to get to the root of the problem and the root of their desires and dreams. Does that make sense and clarify the difference between three and four? I want you to get deep. If you have tears, that is okay. <laughs> because we want to get really meaningful and purposeful to know what is really getting in their way. Okay, awesome. So get really deep and personal. Really good tip. I'm glad you asked that. Um, because a lot of people in a sales call, you know, they'll ask these questions like a survey. But as you practice, get a friend, a family member, roommate, yourself, whatever, to practice this sales process, you'll, you want to really remember this person's a human. Have that human connection, that real connection, feel emotion, share a moment together, even if you don't, it doesn't end in a sale. They'll be a forever follower believer of you, build that connection that might turn into a sale later. And that's okay. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions as we finish up? Thank you for those questions. It's really helpful. So I can continue to, uh, to clarify anything else. No. Nope? Okay, cool. Alrighty. I am signing off for today. Sending you so much love. Thank you ladies for being here. Please keep me updated on this sales process. If you need any more help and you want to chat more, just send me a DM. Happy to support. And we will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday, right? And it is Relationship Day. I know that is a really popular day. So I'm going to do a post. Let me know if you have any questions to talk about for relationships and or specific scenarios that you want to dive into. It can be romantic, platonic, whatever. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Okay, bye for now, ladies. Have a good one.